Hi guys, welcome back to the Desmond Works channel and today we're back on with a Ducati 1098S service uh, series of videos. So before we start, if you're a new viewer to the channel, hi, welcome. If you haven't hit that subscribe button as yet, please do. Uh, and if you're an existing subscriber, please check you're still subscribed because I've heard that some people have been losing their subscription to the channel. So what are we going to be doing today? Um, so if you remember on the last video we did timing belts, so I'll just put that link up there if you didn't manage to watch that and want to look at that. Um, so today we're on with a bit more of the uh, other components of the service. So I'm hoping today to do spark plugs will go in, clean up the brake calipers and put the new brake pads in, fit the new twin line race setup for the front brake calipers and then put a shark spin guard on the swing arm and then also put the Renful quick change carrier on that I've got that I haven't used to date as well. So a few bits and pieces. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so today's parts, I've got the set of pads for the calipers, the new twin line brake setup that I've had for quite some while the swing arm guard and shark's fin, it's got a bit of dirt on the end there. A set of new MAR-10A-J spark plugs, which is the OEM fitment. And then the Renful quick change equivalent sprocket car, I think it's a, J yeah, it's a JT one. I have got the fork seals for the to do the forks, but I haven't got the correct weighted oil turn up yet, so that'll be another, another video. Plan will also be to strip and service and clean up the clutch as well. So first things first, let's do the quick and easy job. Let's get the spark plugs in to the horizontal and vertical cylinders and then refit the coils so that we've got those out of the way. New spark plug. Twenty newton meters. Ten new meters. Right, both spark plugs are in. I'm just gonna refix the radiator back in into its correct position. There was one bolt that came out of here and one that came out of in here, which is this funky one like this. Let me just get those in. Okay, spark plugs completed. Relatively simple job. The key piece was to make sure that I resecured the radiator because as you'll remember from the last video, and you can see here the bottom of the radiator fouls getting that HT coil out so you have to take off the bolt that sits in there and the bolt sits up there and that gives you about 10 millimeters of movement up to be able to just clear you see these little fins they've got on the side of the HT coil they sort of just catch on the front of that radiator lip there as well so Moving that up by about 10 mil gives you the clearance to be able to take that off without having to fully remove your radiator. Okay, next job I'm gonna do is the brake calipers, uh, clean up, change the pads, and change these lines. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the lines first because it's just easier with the calipers in place. And then I'll remove the calipers and a bit of hot soapy water, give them a really good clean up and then we'll refit the calipers and then refit the lines and then completely bleed the system again with fresh brake fluid. Okay, I think off the top of my head that these are a 12 mil, so let me just go and get a 12 mil spanner and check that out. Yep, yeah, so that's 12 mil. Just loosen it for now, just so I know I can get it off. This one's a bit more challenging. There we go. Right, that's loose. And then lastly, I just need to loosen off the connection 
on the master cylinder. Okay, so I've loosened banjo belt here, the double banjo belt down here, and the other banjo belt through on the other caliper. What I'm gonna do now is just release the calipers, which as you can see is just a big Allen bolt. So let me get the right size tool for that and we'll just pop those off quickly. Size eight. Just be careful of the little caliper spacers that just will drop out from here. Okay, calipers are ready to pop off. I've just left them loosely on about one thread while I just disconnect the brake line that runs down here. So let me just get that out of the retaining clip. Then I'm just gonna take this off, so I'm just gonna stick a rag under here to make allowance for any brake fluid that's probably gonna drop out of there as well. Okay, calipers are off, lines are off. Let's just go over to the bench and then have a look at those. Let's just remove the lines. Okay, so calipers fully stripped down. You can see that I these are really clean calipers. I clean these typically after every track day and then between the sessions I tend to spray in brake fluid at the calipers just to keep the pistons clean. So these are not gonna need much of a, much of a clean down. What I'm gonna do is just get some hot soapy water and just uh, give them a light scrub down. Let me just go and get that. Okay, calipers all cleaned up. So I just use hot soapy water for the vast majority of the clean. And then the last, very last piece that you saw that you saw me doing was I'll pull the pistons out of the calipers as far as I can without fully removing them. And then use a bit of um, brake cleaning fluid just to get rid of the stubborn sort of brake dust tide mark you get on those. Because you tend to find the hot water will get rid of about 90% of the brake dust, but you need the brake clean to do the last little piece. I try to limit the amount of brake clean I use because it's a solvent. So whilst it's designed to go on the calipers, you've got to remember that you've got rubber seals in the back of there and you are affecting the life of those seals by using solvent over and over again. So I do try to limit the use, but they're all cleaned and ready to put back on the bike now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and stick these loosely on the bike and then we'll get the new lines fitted in. Oh, I should add, using the water is not really an issue. I hold my finger over that as I'm cleaning it the whole time, so it shouldn't get in. And then the very last thing you'll, you see me do is I hold the caliper upside down and squeeze the pistons back in, and that shoots a massive splurge of most of the um, brake fluid that sits in the caliper and would take any sort of water that entered the very top of the orifice, so you should, wouldn't have an issue with that. It's never been a problem for me before anyway. So in case any doubters are out there wondering why I'm using water and not just pure brake cleaning fluid. Okay, let's, um, oh, I'll just give those a little scrub so that they're clean as well. And then we'll stick the calipers with the new pads back on the bike. Okay, so calipers are loosely placed on at the moment. I've not talked this down. Um, 
So just answer a quick few queries that are probably going through people's heads. Why am I sticking the calipers on when I'm going to be doing the fork seals? Uh, the reason for that is I need to have something to push against to bleed the calipers. So whilst I'll be taking these back off again, for the moment I need to have them pushing against the discs so that I can bleed the calipers correctly. And then I'll be stripping everything back off so that I can get the forks out to do the fork seals when the oil turns up. Okay, let's get the lines to fit onto the calipers. So, gone for twin race setup. Just make sure one line's longer than the other. Okay, so this longest line needs to go to the left hand caliper and this is the right hand caliper. Okay, so lines are in and I've tightened them up. So we've got double banjo connection up here by the master cylinder. Then comes down to one on the right hand caliper, straight on connection. And the second on the left hand caliper again, straight on connection. Okay, let's uh, pop off the dust caps and we shall go for a bleed on this system. Also need to just take the reservoir cap off and dust cap for the master cylinder because what we'll do is we will bleed the master cylinder first. Once that's bled, we'll then proceed to bleed the calipers. Okay, I didn't film the whole bleed in process, but uh, it's only because it's just hugely repetitive and time consuming to get it right. But we're there, so a little bit of travel till I start getting a firm lever and then it's firm all the way back and stops there. I you mean, you could put it right back if you want to, but all good. So I've also got the reservoir just below the maximum line and that's to allow for heat expansion. Um, I wouldn't I would never take it right up to the maximum line because uh, you effectively wedge that reservoir which gives you no room for expansion you'll also notice that I took out the fluid that was in there prior to starting to bleed that's because it's been such a long time since um, I topped the fluid up that I can't remember what fluid it was so it's better to make sure that you're putting completely fresh fluid from a known source in so I took the old stuff out and then put the new stuff in and fully bled that through process was bleed at the master reservoir and then just keep feeding fluid down once it stops taking fluid come down to the furthest caliper away so the left hand side one and then bleed here till you start getting fluid come out once you start getting fluid come out come round to the near side caliper bleed it till you get fluid coming out of here as well then I come back up to the reservoir uh, master cylinder sorry just to bleed out any last remaining air and you tend to get a few small bubbles so that means I've got a really good master cylinder then it's a case of just going back and do the left hand caliper do it till you get no air bubbles coming out do the right hand caliper till you get no air bubbles come out you should get a nice firm lever and then what I do is I just pull a little bit of fluid through on that caliper and then a lot, uh, a little bit of fluid out of that caliper to ensure that I've got no bubbles. Once you've got a bubble free pull on the lever, just tighten everything up and clean up and you're good to go. So that is front brakes have been cleaned, brand new pads in there, brand new lines and brand new brake fluid so we are now race configured on the front end setup of this 1098s the reason why it wasn't uh compliant beforehand is because the the single line setup took its manifold point from the caliper so you can go for a single line connection at the 
master cylinder, but the split of the pipes must take place at the top of the yoke to be compliant with ACU regulations. So I go for a twin line setup because it removes any sort of ambiguity and argument around whether or not it's splitting in the correct place. But that means I've now got a compliant setup on here. Okay, so next job, I'm just gonna move the fairing panels out of the way that I've stored out of here. Um, I'm gonna be putting the Renful Quick Change Carrier on the back. So I'm gonna be put it onto the workshop stand so that I can remove the paddock stand and then I'll also be removing this um, crash protector that's on here so that we can get the um, shark's fin on as well so dependent on how this is mounted which I think is literally just bolted as part of the chain guard I might leave this on because it's um, you know over the top of the shark's fin because it would just act as a bit of extra protection for it but i'll just have to see if it interferes with the fitment of that but that's obviously that's a good crash protector that's been put on there so it'd be a shame to lose it for whoever's got it and then we'll be getting rid of this standard um rear sprocket and hub carrier for the aftermarket jt one that i've got so that will give some options to whoever becomes the next owner of the bike as well Okay, let me just get this stuff out of the way, get it up onto the workshop stand, and then we'll talk through how to change this uh, rear end setup here. Okay, so we're up on the workshop stand, which just gives me nice free access to the rear end of the bike now, so I can get the, this nut off here. So there's a couple of pieces I need to do to be able to change over to the Renfrew sprocket. I need to undo the cush drives first, so that they're free. Once that's off, I'll remove the retaining spring here for the rear nut on the hub, and then I shall buzz that off with the ratchet gun. Once that's all off, I'll be able to then just pull this whole assembly off and then change it over for the quick fit one. One piece I should add first is I'm gonna loosen the chain off first. So I'll unpinch the hub which is two bolts here. Then just loosen the tension on the chain and then we can go ahead and do all the bits and pieces with this quick change piece. Once I've got everything off at this end, because this will be clear, I can then also remove this plastic guard here, which is one bolt there and one bolt up in there as well. Okay, let's get this done. Okay, so standard sprocket also acts as the cush, cush drive carriers or the bushes. Don't need that. So we're moving over to the Renful one. So the Renful now becomes the, or oh sorry, this is a JT, but a copy of the Renful one. This now acts as the cush bushes carrier. So just check that these are all okay. Oh. looking for any splits or any separation from the metal but there's none so we're good to go stuck on the plate still so there we go they're all done stick this back on the bike this exposed I'm just going to give it a bit of a clean down right what I'm going to do is just hang fire there so I've cleaned that up but there's a couple of pieces that I'm just conscious that I need to do before I stick on the rear sprocket so I'm going to get off this lower cover and just test fit the shark's fin because I think I need to remove this top part of the chain guard as well. But I just want to double check that. 
The other piece I want to do while I've got the rear caliper exposed is obviously change those pads. So I'm just going to do that quickly as well. So I'm just going to go and get the correct size hex key. We'll pop off the rear caliper, change those pads over and just put that back in as well. So I'm not going to be changing these rear pads because as you can see they're still brand new. It's because I don't really use the rear brake when I'm riding. I only use it for going around the paddock area. So um, it'd be pretty pointless changing those over. Plenty of life. I can chuck in the other ones as spares for whoever buys the bike. What I'm going to just do is quickly clean off the brake sort of debris that sits on the external parts of the caliper and the chain wax and then just stick that back up on there. Six newton meters. Okay, so caliper's just been given a, a general clean. Um, I've also cleaned all round the rear sprocket carrier. So what I need to do is just remove this plastic cover here. So I need to undo the chain slider which is holding that in place and then I'll just pop that off. We'll offer up the um, shark's fin and see where we're at. There you go, the shark's fin is in place now. Another ACU requirement for being able to race the bike. Um, you'll see that I've left the original rubber uh, chain guard in place. It's because, as with all these aftermarket things, this tends to be sitting a little bit proud from the bike. So I'm gonna leave that in place because it will act as good protection and help, helps keep this in a reasonably good situation. But that's secure underneath. I just opened out the hole in the um, swing arm protector and shark's fin to 10 mil, which is the shoulder of the um, bolt that holds the chain runner in so that that sits against the metal of the actual swing arm. So it's torqued down properly and not acting against that. And then I've got two eight mil cap head bolts that have gone in there. I haven't locked tight those at the moment because I'm going to see if I can get some Allen because uh, they're five mil threads, not six mil, which the rest of them were. So I just want to see if I can get some cap head, um, sorry, some Allen head bolts to go in there in place. If not, I'll just remove those loosely quickly and then just lock tight them in. But that's our chain guard in place. What I'll do now is fit the rear sprocket carrier and we will tighten up this assembly and um, be good to go again hopefully. <sighs> right, there we go. So I've got the Rentful equivalent quick change sprocket set up on here now. Um, still 525 chain, but it's got the 37 rear teeth on there. And I, I think I had a 14 on the front, if I remember right from the last meeting. But we've now got an ACU compliant shark's fin set up. And we've done the brake set up. Well, at least for today is to do a clean of the clutch. So what I'm going to do is just buzz off the um, clutch cover here and then I'll take off the pressure plate which is the six spring retaining bolts there and then we'll take this apart and have a look at it. Okay, so clutches apart. Um, the basket's got life left in it. I'd say probably 
probably would do another season just just starting to pit on some of the in some of the areas you can feel it others the benefit of the 42 tooth baskets is that you tend to spread the wear a lot more so I'm happy with that as it is what I'm going to do is give a good clean up to all these components um, and then re-grease up the ball and ramps stick them back in uh, I'll just check the pack thickness and then stick that all back in as well right I'm going to clean that all off camera because it's just a monotonous little task everything's been cleaned up so really it's now just a reverse order reassembly process So once they've been greased up, they should hold themselves in there. A little bit of grease on the back of the spider spring. Bit of locking compound. Make sure the spring is located correctly. A little bit of grease inside the top hat. Pressure plate goes on. Springs. And there you have it one slipper clutch has been serviced and that for today's video is a wrap so just to go for a quick summary of what we've done today as part of the service so plugs have been done I should point out I have checked the filter it's a K&N filter that sits in here hence why I've not replaced the air filter so it's a K&N uh, life filter I think they do like 50,000 miles I gave it a blow through with a compressed air gun um, it's all good so that's that's okay we've put in fresh brake pads on the front calipers fresh brake lines so that we're on a twin line setup fresh fluid and that's all bled through all good and gold uh, on the rear So on the rear setup, we checked the rear brake caliper, which has got plenty of life left in the pads. They're almost new. We have now fitted on the Renful sprocket carrier. It's got currently a 37 tooth rear sprocket with a 14 front. I have now fitted on the shark's fin for the swing arm protector and setup. So that's all good. And I've loosely adjusted the chain because I'll need to do that properly once it's sat back on its own weight. So that, that needs still to be adjusted. And I got to lock tight these if I can get hold of some short five mil Allen headed bolts instead of these little cap bolts. So all that remains to do, front fork seals on the Olin's forks, fresh oil in there, then a really good naked bike clean so that we can get into all the places where we can't when the fairings are on. Then all the fairings will be cleaned up and then it will be listed for sale. So I think that that really wraps this video up for today. Okay, that's a wrap for that video there. So plenty of work done on the bike. Um, there's fresh oil in there now, fresh oil filter. We've checked the K&N filter in the air box. Got new spark plugs in, um, new front brake pads, new front brake lines, new front brake oil, um, or fluid, sorry. Their rear caliper has been checked and has got nearly new pads in there, so I've not touched those. I've put on the Renful uh, equivalent sprocket carrier so that it gives change options. The rear shark's fin has gone on the bike and I've serviced the slipper clutch. So all I've got left to do now, front forks, 
give the bike a damn good clean, polish all the pe uh, bodywork, and then list it for sale. Next video. So the next video won't be the Olin's forks getting done because I am now a week away from painting the bodywork on the ST2. So next weekend, I'm off from Thursday, but next weekend I'll be working on rubbing down all of the bodywork. And then hopefully the next video you'll see will be following the Monday where uh, my friend and I are painting a load of our bodywork. So hopefully you'll see the finished fairings for the ST2 ready to go. So if you enjoyed today's video, chuck us a like. Um, please share away with the video and any other videos you've watched in my channel. I'd love to start growing the channel a bit quicker. If you've got any questions or comments, stick them down below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and notification bell for more content. I'll see you on the next video then. Cheers then. Bye.